genito urinary tuberculosis right so first important point what's the most common organism so obviously it's the mycobacterium tuberculosis simple generally it is more common in males and what's the age group age group is 20 to 40 years simple now what is the first organ affected in genitourinary tuberculosis obviously the first organ affected its lungs from lungs how the infection reaches to the genitourinary tract it's by hematogenous spread clear so what's the first organ affected the first organ affected is lungs and from lungs genitourinary tract is involved by which spread it's the hematogenous spread hematogenous spread okay now see how this infection reaches the genitourinary tract you can see this is kidney this is ureter this is bladder this is prostate this is urethra and this is vas deferens clear so from lungs via hematogenous spread two organs are affected primarily via hematogenous spread which two organs are affected kidney and prostate so by hematogenous spread kidney and prostate are affected kidney and prostate simple rest organs are involved by either descent of infection or ascent of infection what is the meaning see when the kidney is involved via urine can you see the organism reaches ureter and then bladder so this is known as what descent of infection and when prostate is involved what happens via prostatic urethra this infection might reach what the vas deferens so this is what ascent of infection so rest of the organs are involved by either either descent of infection or by ascent of infection clear in this diagram you can see that one organ is missing and that organ is spared so which organ is missing in this diagram you can see what testis so this testis is spared so in genitourinary tuberculosis important point this testis is spared now see what is the pathophysiology of this genitourinary tract tuberculosis so after hematogenous spread what this bacteria is lost into periglomerular capillaries periglomerular capillaries means around glomeruli bacteria is lodged what is the good thing that most of us are having good immunity so because of that this infection is either cleared or infection is dormant in the periglomerular capillaries or around periglomerular capillaries when someone immunity goes down and when the immunity is compromised what there is activation of bacteria so bacteria is lost in periglomerular capillaries clear and when immunity is down or patient is immunocompromised in that case there is activation of bacteria when there is activation of bacteria this bacteria means mycobacterium tuberculosis it is going to cause what cortical granuloma so there is formation of granuloma in the cortex after that there is formation of what tubercular abscess so there is formation of this tubercular abscess and this tubercular abscess ruptures into pelvic alicial system so when it ruptures into pelvic alicial system now pus enters into pelvic alicial system and via urine it starts coming out when pus mixes with urine coming out patient is having what urinary frequency so earliest most common symptom is increased frequency and when this patient is having increased urinary frequency which is the earliest most common symptom patient is coming to us and we are sending the patient's urine for examination because i suspect uti so whenever i send patients urine for routine and microscopic examination what i find i find pus and if i send the urine for urine culture sensitivity since it's mycobacterium tuberculosis there is no growth within 48 hours so what happens it is sterile 
Clear? So what is the problem? On culture sensitivity, there is no growth within 48 hours and there is pus collection on urine RM. There is presence of pus cells. So this is known as what? Sterile pyuria. Sterile pyuria. Clear? So this is just the beginning. So patient earliest most common symptom of genitourinary tract tuberculosis is increased urinary frequency and the patient is having sterile pyuria. This is the beginning. Now system wise see what are the changes which are going to occur. First we are going to discuss what are the changes in kidney and ureter. So see the changes in kidney and ureter. Okay. So, what happens? There is calicial stenosis or sometimes there is stenosis at PUJ. So, in these patients, there is calicial stenosis or there is stenosis at PUJ. And because of this stenosis, there is obstruction. So, the patient will be having what? Hydronephrosis. And because of this hydronephrosis, what happens? There is pyonephrosis. But actually speaking, in the beginning, rather than pyonephrosis, there is collection of cheesy material. Clear? So, what's that? That is Kesius necrosis. So, in these patients, there is Kesius necrosis. Right? So, in these patients, because of Kesius necrosis, kidney is filled with cheesy material. And that is known as putty kidney. So, what? Here, kidney. It's filled with cheesy material. And this question was asked in Jipmer. It was an image-based question. So how it looks like? So see here, kidney is filled with cheesy material. When we do the grossing, you can see that whenever we do the grossing, we can see there is presence of what this cheesy material. Over a period of time, what happens? There is calcification. And the calcified kidney is known as cement kidney. So, kidney is filled with cheesy material and what's the name of this kidney? This is known as putty kidney. In this, there is scattered calcification also. Clear? After that, kidney is calcified and this calcified kidney, see first how it looks like. So, this is the calcified kidney and this calcified kidney is known as what? This is cement kidney. This is known as cement kidney and after that what happens the kidney is non-functioning that's calcification in the kidney and the kidney is non-functioning so non-functioning so there is non-functioning calcified kidney clear and this process is known as what autonephrectomy so, autonephrectomy is seen in genitourinary tuberculosis and in medicine one question is asked, autosplenectomy is seen in sickle cell anemia. So, autonephrectomy seen in genitourinary tuberculosis, autosplenectomy it is seen in sickle cell anemia. Now, see what are the changes seen in bladder, okay. So, whenever this infection comes into the bladder, what's the problem? If we perform cystoscopy, what is the earliest change? seen on cystoscopy it's the pallor around uretic orifice so this is the bladder clear this is the uretic orifice so this question is frequently asked what is the earliest change seen in genitourinary tract tuberculosis on cystoscopy so here it's the pallor what's that it's the pallor around uretic orifice after that what are the sequence of events see in the bladder there is formation of tubercles so here you can see there is presence of tubercles in this bladder because of these tubercles there is chronic inflammation and because of this chronic inflammation there is fibrosis and because of this fibrosis what happens contraction so what are the sequence of events there is chronic inflammation clear because of this chronic inflammation there is fibrosis and because of this fibrosis there is contraction so what will happen to the bladder bladder is contracted and that is small contracted bladder and this small contracted bladder is known as what thimble bladder so what will happen you can see see the capacity of bladder this is the capacity of bladder so what happens 
there is fibrosis clear so there is small contracted bladder so this is known as what thimble bladder clear how it looks like so here you can see this is small contracted bladder so the capacity is decreased and it is irregular it is looking like this thimble so it's known as thimble bladder now what will happen to the uretic orifice since the bladder is small and contracted you can see the uretic orifice will appear something like this so you can see this is the appearance so this is how this uretic orifice appears on cystoscopy and it is looking like what golf hole so that's why this appearance is golf hole uretic orifice question is asked that what is the earliest change seen on cystoscopy and that's what it's the pallor but the students are doing this mistake in exam they mark what golf hole uretic orifice golf hole uretic orifice this kind of appearance is seen only in advanced cases so you have to read the question language of question carefully so what is this this appearance is golf whole uretric orifice clear and it is seen only in advanced cases now see what's the change in prostate okay so prostate is calcified and since the prostate is calcified it becomes hard and nodular so there is calcification in prostate and because of that it's hard and it's nodular simple now what is the change in vas deferens now what is the change in vas deferens vas deferens is having this kind of appearance okay so tell me what is the name of this appearance this is beaded appearance so this is beaded appearance of vas okay and this is the testis this is the scrotum now what is the problem in vas deferens there is stricture dilatation stricture dilatation why because there is collection of pus and what happens it is going to rupture outside via scrotum so when it is going to rupture outside via scrotum there are multiple discharging sinuses so what beaded appearance of vas with multiple discharging sinuses via scrotum is the characteristic feature of genito urinary tuberculosis so this is beaded appearance of vas with multiple discharging sinuses multiple discharging sinuses okay and we discussed what the testis is spared so these are the changes which are seen in genito urinary tract now how we proceed for the investigations we start the investigation from urine so we discussed that on urine rm what's the finding we go for urine rm and there we find pus cells we go for urine culture sensitivity and on urine culture sensitivity it's sterile there is no growth within 48 hours so since it is sterile this is what sterile pyuria this is sterile pyuria okay question is asked that what is the investigation of choice for renal tuberculosis so generally in the retroperitoneal pathologies we discussed that the investigation of choice is cct so for renal tuberculosis investigation of choice for diagnosis is cct now see the twist in the question investigation of choice for early changes investigation of choice to detect early changes in the renal tuberculosis and in the renal tuberculosis early changes are confined to the calyx and if you want to visualize the calyx what is the better investigation it is ivp in ivp which films are most informative early films or late films so obviously early films right so three important questions investigation of choice for diagnosis of renal tuberculosis right and that is cct okay now see investigation of choice for diagnosis of early changes you have to highlight this early changes in renal tuberculosis 
and if it's early changes the investigation of choice is what ivp which films of ivp are most informative early films so early films of ivp are most informative and what's the earliest change detected in ivp so what is the earliest change detected in ivp you can see so this is what moth eaten calyx here you can see the normal calyx here it looks like that it's eaten by a moth so earliest change this is sometimes image based question also asked this is image based question asked sometimes this is moth eaten calyx and there is another question pipe stem ureter we discussed in retroperitoneal fibrosis there is pipe stem ureter so whenever there is fibrosis there is medial deviation of ureter pipe stem ureter this pipe stem ureter is also seen in tuberculosis so on which investigation if we perform retrograde pilogram rgp there is pipe stem ureter pipe stem ureter so diagnosis is done how we are going to manage tuberculosis obviously we have to give att apart from giving att we have to manage the complications right so see the management we go for att and plus we manage the complications so management of complications okay what are the complications so in ureter there is formation of stricture or development of stricture and if there is stricture we have to go for stricture dilatation in certain patients the kidney becomes non functioning if there is auto nephrectomy in that case what we have to go for nephrectomy third problem the patients are having small contracted bladder that is also known as thimble bladder and if the bladder is small and contracted we have to increase its capacity and if you have to increase its capacity it is known as augmentation how you are going to increase the capacity with the help of bowel mucosa so if we are using small bowel so it is known as enterocystoplasty so the term is augmentation enterocystoplasty okay so the patient who are having ureteric strictures if the patient is having ureteric stricture we go for what dilatation if the patient is having non functioning kidney in that case we go for nephrectomy and if the patient is having small contracted bladder small contracted bladder in that case we go for enterocystoplasty enterocystoplasty what kind of it's the augmentation enterocystoplasty there are certain situations especially in the lower third of ureter when the stricture is non dilatable in that case what should be done so imagine this situation what's the problem here is the stricture in the lower third of ureter and generally it's non dilatable if it's non dilatable stricture in that case what we are going to do can you see we are going to remove that part of ureter so this part of ureter is excised and after excising this part of ureter what i'm going to do i'm going to raise a flap from the bladder so i'm going to raise a flap from bladder and after raising a flap from bladder here you can see that i'm going to tubularize that bladder flap i tubularize the bladder flap and whatever the defect is there in the bladder that is sutured so here you can see the defect is sutured and it is tubularized so i created a new ureter from the bladder flap and this is attached to the rest of the ureter so this is what formation of a neo ureter what's the name of this operation this is known as boari's operation and what's the name of this flap this is known as boari's flap clear so when there is non dilatable stricture especially in the lower third or sometimes there is injury to lower third of ureter and sometimes there is accidental ligation of lower third of ureter in all those cases we go for this operation and this is known as what boari's operation clear so this operation is for which part of ureter this is done for distal third 
distal third of ureter so this is how we manage the complications of genito urinary tuberculosis